Hello everyone, we are back to Silent Ponyville. We're now in chapter three. Um, Pinkie Pie had just realized that her balloon was, well, kinda not gonna work. So um, let's see what happens next. Pinkie Pie tenderly finished cleaning and wrapping her wounds. Her leg still throbbed from the bite wound, but at least now it would start to heal properly. She tested her weight on it. There was a small bit of pain, but nothing she couldn't handle. She could keep moving. She could run away if she had to. She looked at the note she had placed on her bed once more. It had been resting at the bottom of the balloon's basket, as if it had been waiting for her to find it. Laughter and smiles of youth, together as they find out truth. Dreams of the future are held, as fears of the past are expelled. She had been dwelling on this note since she'd found it. She knew it was a riddle. She wasn't very good with riddles, but her mind had finally calmed down enough to start thinking more coherently. Her brain was finally not reeling from the horror long enough to take deciphering these words seriously. Well, I guess the first time means fools. Fools, finding truth, like learning. That word sparked it for her. Oh, this is a riddle about the school. She said, rereading the riddle in the context of the school and all the lines fit. So, does that mean I should head for the school? She looked around at the dilapidated room. The ball, the balloon was torn apart. The body of a half a filly. No reason to stay here, she sighed, as she packed the note into her bag and before grabbing the lantern and then heading outside. She shivered as she hit the cold, snowy air once more. She hadn't realized how warm it had been inside the buildings. She turned the lantern off and placed it in the bag. She then began her gallop towards the school. She watched carefully from behind the tree as the lumbering form of a monster paced away from the entrance of the school. It looked just like the first monster she had encountered, the three-legged groaner. If there's more than one of those things, maybe the groaner is a good thing to call them, she thought to herself. She hoped the buzzing of her phonograph wouldn't give her position away, but it didn't seem to notice any sounds unless she made them. It soon began to lumber away into the fog, turning into a dark silhouette of itself. She figured now was the perfect time to move. She quickly made it to the front door of the school and pulled the handle, trying to get inside quickly. The door jammed from the sound of it being locked. What? What? It's locked, she said, bewildered. She hadn't expected it to be locked, not after what the riddle had told her to come to the school. Did I get the answer wrong, she asked herself, as she looked at the door again. It was then she noticed, just above the handle of the lock, was the symbol of a star on it. She felt like a switch was slipped in her head. She quickly reached into her bag and pulled out the key gummy left for her. To do the ribbon, she placed the key into the keyhole. It fitted perfectly. The door unlocked with a satisfying click that made her smile softly. She went to grab the key key to hold on to it again. The key turned to ash, the tiny pieces quickly falling to the ground. She was in shock at the gift Gummy had given her. The only part that, of it that hadn't turned to ash was the ribbon that floated down gently, landing in her outstretched hoof. No, Gummy's gift, she said, her lip quivering, threatened to fall once more. She shook her head quickly, taking a deep breath of cold air as she calmed herself again. She'd already cried a lot. If she kept crying, she wasn't going to get out of the situation anytime soon. Besides, she still had the ribbon from the key. She very carefully tied the bow in the end of her mane. It still didn't have its frizz to it, but tying it at the end helped make it feel like it was her little poof again. It was a little poofy again. The ribbon gave her comfort. She felt as if Gummy was right here beside her while, she wearing, it, while wearing it. She opened the school door and headed inside. To her surprise, the area was fairly well lit. She had been expecting to see the, her lantern at her house. The school seemed to have fared better than her house did. It had a thick layer of dust, but the structure wasn't nearly as in much disrepair. Lockers lined the walls of the halls leading to the classrooms. Before her opening to the main auditorium, signs hung on the walls pointed out the direction of the gym, the nurse's offices, the principal's office, and a number of the classrooms. Well, Miss Pinkamina Diane Pye, 
We realize that you have been homeschooled for most of your life, but upon testing you on the Ponyville standardized test, your score was not high enough to acknowledge a graduate level pony. So we are requiring that you take at least one year of public school here in Ponyville, the mayor explained to her. What? I have to go to school? Pinky said, pounding in her seat opposite the mayor's desk. But learning was so boring, she stomped her hooves a little in her chair. Now, 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 sis, Octavia said, reaching over and placing a huff on her sister's shoulder. It won't be that bad. Just think of all the new friends you'll be able to make. You'll have a lot more ponies to invite to your party, she said comfortingly. But, but, Pinky said, looking at her sister with ple- pleading eyes. She already knew that she wanted to spread smiles as far and wide as she could. But this was her first time finding other ponies to be friends with to host party for. She was rather intimidated by the thought that they wouldn't like her parties. Tell you what, Octavia said with a comforting smile. If it's all right with the mayor, I'll go to school with you. How does that sound? I don't see why not, the mayor said, nodding with a smile. Really? Oh my gosh, you're the best big sister ever, Pinky said, hugging her dear sister with all her might. A big smile on her face. Octavia smiled in return. She petted her young Philly sister. Pinky smiled with the warm memory. It was one that she hadn't thought about in a long time. When Pinky had decided to leave the farm, Octavia was the one who had been the one willing to help her adjust to her life outside of it. Her parents seemed to understand and stayed behind and to let the kids experience the world. Octavia had been the biggest help while they were at school. She'd given her a confidence boost to meet new ponies. She'd met so many friends. She's also the reason she'd met Mr. and Mrs. Cakes and ended up staying with them. It was after the year of school that Octavia decided to leave for her own adventures, having discovered her love for contrabass and classical music. She'd been sad to see her sister go, but understood she had to go live on a life on her own. Besides, she'd left her in care of some very wonderful friends. Pinky walked down the rows of desks with a soft but warm smile on her face. The room certainly gave Brack plenty of happy memories to remember. She stopped before her old desk in remembrance, but noticed a piece of paper lying on top of it. What's this? she asked before taking a quick breath to blow the dust off of the paper. Sitting on her desk was a little foal's drawing. On it was a picture of a family smiling on a rock farm. She gently placed her hoof over it, or hoof against it. It was one of her old drawings. She smiled as she remembered the fondness she had of doodling during class. She could see their old house in the background. Her moth mother and father standing behind their kids in the foreground. She smiled as the cute scribbling of her and Octavia. Wait, she said suddenly realizing something. She took a hoof away from the picture and stared at it. Something was wrong with her picture. She couldn't put a finger on it. It's my family. What would give me the impression something's wrong? She stared at her family of four. She couldn't fight the strong urge that there was something wrong with the picture. But no matter how she racked her brain, nothing seemed to come to her mind. She scrutinized the picture carefully. I'm, I'm sure if Octo- Octavia were here, she'd know what the problem was. Pinky shook her head and softly. She always was the smartest of us. Even if we were in trouble, she would always bail us out. She, her words stopped dead. All right, fine, I'll play with you. But only because you're so insistent. Her eyes shot back to the paper. She scanned it and counted the number of people in her family once more. One, two, three, four, five? She counted out loud as she pointed to the empty spot that should have contained her other sister. Where's Bellamina? Where's my younger sister? She scoured the page for any sign of her. She wouldn't have drawn a picture of her family without her. Would she? Wait, come to think of it, when was the last time that I had thought about Bellamina? She asked herself quietly, remembering about Octavia several times over in the years, but she'd never thought about Bellamina. Oh my God, I must be the worst sister in the world, she said, feeling so rotten for having forgotten her about her other sister. She tried to recall small memories of her sister desperately, but the only thing that came to mind was the story about how she got her cutie mark, but beyond that... She shook her head furiously, trying to jog and loose any memory, she, but she couldn't remember anything else. She looked down somberly before slamming her hoof against the ground. I'm so, so, so sorry, Bellamina. I promise you, once I get out of here, I'll keep my th- you in my thoughts, Pinky said, determined now. She had to escape the horrors that had befallen Ponyville. She looked around the classroom. 
her eyes beginning to draw to the desk next to hers, the one Octavia had sat in during school. The desk was a red circle with an X through it written with red marker. She carefully grabbed the edge of the desk and opened the top of it, looking inside. Inside the desk was a blue jewel covered, carved into the shape of a contrabass. Wow, it's beautiful, Pinky gasped, examining the item. She wasn't sure what it was doing there, but she had the strong feeling that it was something she was meant to keep. She picked it up carefully before placing it gently into her bag. She closed Octavia's desk before realizing she should check her desk as well. She was careful not to disturb the picture and opened hers as well. Inside was a red jewel in the shape of a balloon. She quickly placed it inside her bag as well. You see an awful lot of as wells. Sorry, <clears throat> moving on. Um, she closed the desk and looked around. None of the other desks appeared to have anything of significance on them. She headed for the front of the class and checked the teacher's desk. There was a note written on it, the, on the desk. At the eve of the switch from night to morning, the red moon will shine. Another riddle, Pinky said aloud to no one. This was certainly made less sense than the last riddle, and she tried to solve it. Off the top of her head, she couldn't figure out what this riddle was trying to tell her. She twirled her head towards the door when she heard the laughter of the foals coming from the hallway once more. She quickly exited the room and looked around the hallway for them. She saw them further down, playing with each other. She slowly approached them, trying to get a better look at the two foals. However, once she got close enough, they began to run down the hallway. She gave chase. The little foals didn't run too far. They quickly made a turn into another room. Pinky stopped in front of the door and read, Janitor's Closet, on the front. She heard a click come from the door as if it had just been unlocked. She reached for the handle and opened it, walking into the closet. The room didn't look like any janitor's closet should. Rather than a s shelves of items for cleaning, it was a mostly empty room. At the end opposite the door stood a small, knee-high pedestal. Then, behind it, was what looked like a door with a clock and symbols on it, in between the two portraits of the princesses. Oh, is that lantern oil? she said as she quickly walked over to the small pedestal, noticing a small bottle of yellow liquid. She sniffed it real quick to confirm what it was before picking it up and placing it in her bag. Good, that should keep me stocked for a while. Never do that in real life, kids. Every science class teaches you not to smell strange liquids. There's the commentary we all know and love. <clears throat> she walked, then walked forward to take a closer look at the door. To the left of the circle was a picture of Princess Luna, graciously drawn with her body in a circle surrounding a small hole in the wall. Princess Celestia was drawn much the same way, also surrounding a small hole in the wall. Wait, this hole? I know this shape. She said, having noticed something about the hole Celestia was surrounding. She quickly reached into her bag and pulled out the red balloon jewel, and it fit, in, and gen fit gently into the hole. It snapped into place with a satisfying click. That means the other jewel must go here, she said, placing the blue contrabass underneath Luna's picture. When the second jewel clicked into place, the clock moved forward out of the door a little, followed by the symbols placed in the circle around it. She looked carefully at the symbols. There were six pictures, three of suns, one red, one yellow, one blue, and three moons, one white, one green, and one red. Wait, a clock and a moon? The words from the teacher's desk came to mind. The eve of the switch from night to morning, night is p.m. and morning is a.m. They switch at 12, and the red moon will glow at that time. She then placed her hand against the dial of symbols and turned it, placing the red moon so that it was directly above the number 12 on the clock. She then moved the two hands of the clock to point to that number as well. The clock chimed 12 times and the dial moved back into the door before the door moved up and rose into the seat opening path. Pinky quickly walked into the next room. Huh? said she said as her ear twitched. She heard a very quiet sound, like it was coming from Ponyville itself. She recognized it as a siren, a siren that was blaring in the distance. She wasn't sure what it meant, but she had a gut instinct that it didn't mean anything good. 
She focused on the room before her. She regretted it instantly. The, the room itself gave off the stench of it rotting. The ceiling was brown and missing tiles. The walls were a mess of peeling rotten, rotted walls. And the floor was covered in dirt, mold, and grime. Holes littered the room, revealing a mesh of iron grating between them, apparently the foundation holding the room together. Two dead ponies hung from the corners of the room, their bodies wrapped in some kind of cloth, but their blood splattered the walls and floor next to them. They hung by chains and metal that kept them suspended. On the wall between them was a single word written in their blood. Run. She didn't need to be told twice and she ran out of the room. She ran out of the janitor's closet and walked back into the hallway. Wait, what happened to the light? She asked as the hallway centered was pitch black. She quickly reached into her bag and pulled out the lantern. The flame came to life, illuminating the hallway. She gasped as the hallway was no longer that of a calm, quiet school, but instead was made of the same dilapidated materials as the room she'd just escaped. Everything was rotting, held together by a metal grating. The rime-covered floor and splotches of blood caked the walls. Hanging bodies of ponies were visible at various intervals down the wall. The smell was so much more rotting, gagging pinky. If not for the lantern, her mouth would she would have lost her stomach. The sound of static hit her ears next. Her heart started pounding as she heard footsteps echoing down the hall. She turned to the direction of the footsteps, listening to a hiss of the static grew louder as the footsteps grew closer. Her brain was screaming at her to run, listen to the wall and put every force of power into her hooves. But she seemed stuck, almost glued to the spot. This feeling wasn't like the other monsters. This sensation was piercing right down into her very soul. The feeling was biting into her and was forcing her to stay. The edge of the light hit the creature. It walked further into the edge of her light, and she felt her heart stop for just a brief moment. It was one of the monsters from her nightmare. It was a tall, slender pony that towered over her. It had no face. Its skin clung to its face and body as if it were attached directly to its bones. It was pale, deathly pale, accentuated by the black suit and red tie it wore on its torso. It continued to take slow careful steps toward her. Every hoofstep echoed in her brain like it was trying to grate into her mind. The phonograph erupted into its high-pitched ringing as she felt a pain strike her mind. She finally felt herself no longer glued to the spot, and with every ounce of strength she turned and ran. Her heart jumped into her throat, and it beat a mile a minute as her hooves connected loudly with every single step she took. She didn't care about the grime or the body she passed. She had to get away. Her mind grated with the feeling of haze that the creature seemed to keep to bring with its presence. The loud ringing of the phonograph seemed to be the only thing that kept her in any state of mind to run as fast as she could. She rounded the corner with lightning speed. She was putting everything into this. She knew she could run fast. She could keep up she could keep up with, if not outrun Rainbow Dash at times. She had to be losing to slender po the Slender Pony. She had to be escaping. She dared to look over her shoulder. It was keeping up with her. It seemed to only be walking. Somehow, the slow pace canter it sh strutted to keep up. The whole, and his whole being seemed to slide toward her, as if there was no escaping. Her mind reeled as she wiped her head forward, trying to go faster. She had to turn another corner. Her hoof cut up under one of her legs, and she nearly fell. She scrambled, and her legs took off again. Shka! A blood-curdling scream bellowed out before her as she, he saw half of a white filly start to crawl straight for her. She jumped over, and its tongue passing over one of her hooves as it tried to bite her. The screams of the filly were cut short as she heard the sound of it being crushed by the monster chasing her. Her stomach hit her heart inside of her throat and her lungs burned. Her mind was reeling and the same haze was growing. I can't escape it. I can't escape it. I can't escape it. I can't escape it. I can't escape! The words yelled and flung themselves into the very corners of her mind. She felt it. It was about to die. The monster was about to kill her and there was nothing she could do about it. Her eyes flung open, and she saw the end of the hallway and an open door. An exit! Her mind screamed as she continued to book it. She raced as fast as she could, trying to ignore the constant looming presence of the threat behind her. 
She had to get up that, to that door. She was almost there, just a bit closer, just a little closer. She was going to make it. She jumped, passing straight through the open door and skidding to a halt outside of the room. Her heart instantly sank as she looked around. The room was square with one entrance, no exit. She had jumped straight into a dead end with that monster behind her. She looked around frantically. The room was adorned with party decorations, multicolored streamers and balloons caked with blood, vile-looking snacks, poorly wrapped in rotting gifts, hanging ponies in every corner, a seal of blood drawn out on the floor. She instantly turned around as the slender pony gradually walked into the room. The only opening to the door was sealed shut by an iron gate behind it. There was no escaping it now. She was trapped in the same room as this monster. She dropped the lantern from her mouth, no longer able to hold it onto it as she panted frantically. The lantern rolled down the center of the room, turning itself right up and in the center of the blood-drawn seal. The seal lit up with a red glow, filling the whole room with light. She could see the red-hued slender pony as it walked towards her. Stay back, she yelled as she ran off to the gifts. She began grabbing them one by one and throwing them at the pony. The gifts struck the pony and seemed to stun him for a moment. But as the gifts hit him, they fell to the ground and burst into a pile of ash. They slowed down his walk down for a moment, but they soon didn't even phase him. She grabbed the last gift and tossed it with all her might, straight at his head. It struck him before blowing into a pile of ash. Pinky cried. She felt like her foreleg was split, hitting open as her vision hastened to oblivion. She stomped her hooves and ran blindly in one direction, away from the pony. Her vision returned as she felt the blood trickling between her, down between her eyes, dripping off her nose. He'd opened a fresh root in her head. She grabbed the table, holding a snack, vile snacks on top of it, and tossed it to the ground. She raised her hind legs with all her might, and she kicked the table straight at the slender pony. The whole table struck him and pushed him back. He hit a wall and the, as the table seemed to hold him in place for a moment. Pinky panted as she stared at the creature. He got up, pushed the table gently and the table fell apart in a pile of ash. Pinky's legs gave way under her knees. Tears fell from her eyes as she sobbed in pain and exhaustion. She couldn't fight this monster. It was way too much. Her mind reeled and wanted to accept her death. Her body couldn't take it. Her mind couldn't take it. She felt her mind began to hurt worse as the slender pony was drawing closer. She couldn't look at him. She sobbed with her eyes cl closed shut, is waiting for the horror to end once and for all. The pain stopped. The hoof sit down of the pony had gotten, stopped getting closer. The ringing of the phonograph was dying down. Pinky dared to open her eyes and looked up. He was still there, but he had stopped. It's assault on her. He looked like he was looking away from her at something she couldn't see. That's when she heard it, the siren. The siren was going off again in the distance. The slender pony put one of its hooves to the ground and turned to look at Pinky. She braced herself whatever it was going to do, but he just stood there. Then slowly he lowered his head into his suit and pulled out a small brown box. He placed it on the ground before turning around and walking out of the room. The light from the room dimmed until it was pitch back. The light from the lantern began to gentle glow into the room. Pinky hiccuped, taking a huge breath of air that burned her lungs again. She couldn't feel her heart still racing at the top speed as she began to get her bearings. The room wasn't the one she had been in. It looked like a normal basement. It had pipes and fixtures that controlled water heating throughout the building. Her lantern lay on its side in the middle of the room, glowing with its gentle flame. The brown box was still where the slender pony had left it. Words failed Pinky. She didn't have the strength to get up at the moment. She lowered her head and let herself sob again.